The information contained in this video is not financial advice, and a failure to correctly utilize the processes outlined and networks used can result in the permanent loss of your crypto. Don't be an idiot. Follow the steps as given. Are you worried about what's going to happen next year when Ethereum transitions to proof of stake? Are you ready for it? Do you even know what's going to happen? Well, there's a group of people, and you know them, I know them, and uh, they think that there's a better way. Keep your money in the wallet. So what exactly is Ethereum 2.0? Uh, well, first off, 2.0 is kind of a misnomer. It's still going to be the same Ethereum network. It's just its backbone is going to be supported rather than by miners doing proof of work, uh, by validators that are there due to proof of stake, which is kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, once that networks is replaced, uh, these validators are going to be a more reliable source of work. Uh, they can do more, with less, uh, it takes far less power and computational energy to process the same amount of transactions that GPU miners or ASIC miners are currently doing. And these systems can be spun up very quickly. And of course, there is a extremely large uh, financial commitment as you are required at minimum to stake 32 Ethereum to start a validator so you're stuck and you're helping that network until it's up and online no coin jumping so what are the benefits of staking on ETH pool well for one you don't have to run the validator node you don't have to buy the hardware set it up configure it make sure it has lots of uptime because obviously if you're offline you're not earning uh, you don't have to update it uh, you don't have to do any maintenance on it. They will handle all of that for you. Secondly, you'll get access to their MEV team, um, which if you're familiar with their mining group is, you know, pretty successful. There's a good chance that MEV rewards will scale into Ethereum after the merge. And this means if you're involved with a pool that has uh, MEV contributors that are actually searching for that and contributing blocks that will hopefully pay off for all the stakers in that pool, it could be quite lucrative. And beyond that, you still retain all of your personal rewards. That 32 ETH is not accessible to the pool. This is non-custodial. These uh, block rewards and the attestation rewards go entirely to you. The pool only has access to the transaction rewards and the MEV rewards themselves, which, of course, they will then start paying to you after the launch of 2.0. Alright, so to get started, you're going to have to navigate to launchpad.ethereum.org, and this will take you to the uh, ETH2 launchpad for staking. Go ahead and click become a validator though you're not going to be running a validator you still have to go through this process you're gonna to have to agree to 10 steps here um you can read them or you can click continue and i accept over and over and over again there's a lot to go through here um if you're becoming a validator you know you definitely want to read a lot of this uh it tells you how to not lose your ethereum uh, if you're staking what you can and can't do. I do want to make a significant note that you cannot run your own validator with the same key that you are using with the pool. This will cause you to basically lose that validator. Don't do it. Go ahead and click continue on the list and you have to choose an Ethereum 1 client. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you choose. For this one, we're going to use Prism. Uh, you can use any of them, but I'm going to demonstrate with Prism. Scroll to the bottom, click Continue. Now, it's going to ask you how many validators you'd like to run. Uh, if you're only staking 32 Ethereum, select one. You can stake as much as you want at this juncture as you wish, um, but go ahead and select the number that you'd like, uh, and select which operating system you're running. 
uh, as you will need to download a file for your system to generate a key. Go ahead and click download from GitHub and this will bring you a page to download your key generator. Uh, there are three types. You have a Darwin for Apple devices, Linux for Linux, and Windows for Windows. Go ahead and click the Windows zip to download if you're utilizing Windows. Now, for convenience reasons, I'm going to create a folder for this. You can just click and drag it out of WinRAR and place it in the folder. Alternatively, you can open a command window and just click and drag the executable into that instead. So go ahead and open that uh, zip file that you just downloaded using your favorite handy zip program. And you can literally open it up and click drag that file into the Prism directory. Now, after you've placed the deposit executable in that directory, uh, you're gonna need to run a command line. So type CMD in your Windows bar or bring up a command prompt, however you wish and then click and drag the deposit.exe into that so it gives it the full file path. And you're going to need to type in the following uh, after the deposit.exe. New hyphen mnemonic hyphen hyphen chain mainnet. Select the language you'd like to work within. Uh, and now you're gonna have to select the number of validators you wanna create. You can do as many as you want and then enter a password. Do not lose this password, you'll need it later. And then once you enter that, it's going to generate a 24 word mnemonic. You gotta write this down. This is super important. If you lose this, you can lose access to 32 Ethereum plus your staking rewards. I beg you, just write it down. Don't lose it. Uh, you're gonna have to re-enter it anyway, so it's gonna confirm that you actually did write it down. Again, don't just copy-paste it into a file or put it on Google Drive. Please just write it on physical paper somewhere and put it aside. Re-enter the mnemonic, hit enter, and done. It'll generate your keys and tell you what directory it put them in, which is usually a C colon users, uh, your user, and then a validator or underscore keys subdirectory. And you can go ahead and then close that. So now we're going to go back to the previous tab we still had open. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to click I am keeping my keys safe and had written them down. Please don't lie. Write them down and then click continue. Now it's going to ask you to upload your deposit data. You're going to have to find that deposit data file in the directory where it saved it. Again, it's a C colon backslash users your name backslash validator underscore keys and there is a deposit data file and a key store file. We'll come back to that later. So now click and drag that deposit data file into the site uh, and then we'll upload it to the beacon chain. So just drop it there and then click continue. Super easy. And now comes the big moment. This is where you're going to have to stake all of that Ethereum to the staking process. Um, normally we're gonna use MetaMask, I'm very familiar with it, but first I wanna talk about uh, how to connect a hardware wallet to MetaMask to stake through that, because let's be honest, most of you are going to be using a hardware wallet to store 100 plus thousand dollars worth of Ethereum. Go ahead and log into MetaMask. If you don't have a MetaMask account, you'll have to go to metamask.io to create one. Uh, you can check out my other videos if you're interested in that process, the getting started videos. Click the button at the top right and click connect hardware wallet. This is gonna bring you a page to either select a ledger or a Trezor. It does not uh, support things like Decent or anything like that and you'll click continue. Now, assuming that you have a hardware wallet installed, it will show up here and allow you to pair. Uh, so just follow the instructions from this point to pair that device. Uh, in this case, the funds are already on MetaMask. So I'm gonna click on MetaMask and it's gonna ask me to connect it. I've already logged in, so I can just click next. Uh, and then I will click connect, which is an approval. It's gonna take a brief moment. It's gonna show me my network and current balance. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click continue and we're getting down to the wire here. This is where it gets serious. So now I will select how many validators I am staking for. I will agree to a lot of serious statements. You can check the deposit contract address if you want to do that for safety reasons, I do recommend it. And you are going to have to agree that you are not going to attempt to double deposit on this 
particular key. That's a bad idea because you will basically have that 32 ETH locked, but you won't be earning rewards on it. Once you click confirm, it'll take you to the transaction screen, click confirm request, and then you will get a MetaMask approval window to confirm staking a full 32 Ethereum. When you're sure, click confirm. And then it's gonna take a couple really excruciating moments. It's just gonna sit here and blink at you for a bit and you can just contemplate your life and think about how much money you committed to this. And it's done. Our transaction is successful. If you click continue, it'll take you to a confirmation screen, uh, let you know how much you've staked, what the current APR level is, and how many validators you own. All right, so now we're gonna get started on ethpool.org and this is where you're going to connect your validator to the solo staking pool so you just go to ethpool.org and we can put it on dark mode just like any of the other bitfly sites that's way better in my opinion i love their dark mode look as you can see there's a nice little eth2 icon at the top along with all the mining pools and we can just click on the top and click uh, start mining and it'll take us to a setup or sign up registration page so I'm just going to sign up with uh, my email here and then create a password and then create another password, uh, agree to those terms and conditions and register. You know, everyone's been through this rigmarole 30,000 times. Uh, it's going to ask me to save my password and, you know, I don't really care about that. And then, of course, we have to check our email and verify uh, the address, uh, you know, just to confirm our registration. Once you're confirmed, just go ahead and sign in once again enter your login info click login and you'll be on the dashboard i don't have anything set up here because i have no validators registered um they've proposed no blocks i have no earnings to look at so let's click on start staking there's three different places to click on it so there's three main things you need to keep in mind uh first off we need to do all the steps we already did you need to drop in your keystore.json file for each validator you created and you need to enter that keystore password be careful. You need to read these comments and agree to them. Um, I definitely met, recommend looking through how slashing works. And I'm gonna open up where it generated my key store file. I'm just gonna pick the most recent one I created, drop it in. Now remember when we created a password in the command window, you need to enter that here. Not the seed phrase, the actual password you created. And I click upload and it'll give you a green check mark if I did it correctly. More often than not, if you're typing it in wrong, it'll give you a red X. So now I have one validator registered and you can see that it is a pending status because it hasn't launched yet because I made it too recently. If I click on that, it'll open me up on the Beacon Chain site to look at it. And of course it's not there. It needs to take its time again. It takes 15 hours for that to come online. So I'm just gonna flip over here. Now this account has two active validators. You can see that they have a green check for active. If I click on the button at the top right, it'll pull up the uh, Beacon Chain site as well as that validator list and all of their current statistics. I can go and look at the validator leaderboard if I wanna check some others out. Um, I can look at these same statistics for all of my validators as well to see how many blocks they found, what their average earnings are, uh, their effectiveness as a validator, their total uptime, um, all the recent block proposals and attestations. And that is pretty much it for launch. It's pretty cool, right? We are approaching a crossroads, the transition from proof of work to proof of stake. And despite the protest, denial, and anger, it's probably coming sooner than you think. Now, I don't know what will happen to mining after the merge, but I can say this, you don't want to be left behind.